right, Metro Detroit golfers, I'm Chad. And I'm Ben. We are here with a Tuesday tip of the week. So a lot of you come through the door here at GLA and you're looking for the fastest way to improve your game. Uh, any effort you put in, you'd like it not to take forever to see the results, yes? Yes. So Ben, what is the absolute fastest way that people can train to improve their golf game? Uh, you go get a buck, bucket of balls, about a thousand, you just keep it in the same club at the same target the entire time. <laughs> He's kidding. Don't, <laughs> no, do that. don't do yeah. that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't be that guy, right? <laughs> Which is normal. So yes. uh, that's very, very normal, and that's why Ben makes a joke about it. So people just ball, 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 yeah. ball, and then really get frustrated at the end of that road, yes? Yeah, we're not going to do it that way. Uh, we're going to do it a little bit different. So uh, we talk a lot about interleaving with our players. So what we're going to do in this training session today is I'm going to switch skills about every five minutes. So what you're going to notice, I'm going to train a skill for about five minutes, and I'm going to move on. The more you move, the faster the skill is going to grow. So using training circuits and moving around is the fastest way to improve the skill. Yeah, doing different things more frequently, just like we do on the golf course. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so that's a normal <laughs> idea. All right, so the research is pretty clear on this. So doing the same thing over and over again is not going to get you in the dance, but moving around, setting up circuits. Yes. So today we're going to walk through, uh, so Ben used five minutes. Uh, we're not going to do all these circuits for five minutes, but we're going to demonstrate them. So we'd encourage you to write some notes as you want, watch this. The things that we're going to uh, improve on, the free swinging motion, yep. yes. Yep. Then we're going to work on where the divot is. Yep. Then we're going to work on center face contact. Then we're going to work on the club face. And then we're going to work on the club path. And then if we had more time in the video, we would loop that. We would go back through yeah, it. Yeah, I'd run through it maybe three, four times. Okay, cool. So short time on task, yep. but you keep coming back to it, yes? Yep. You ready to rock? I'm ready. Okay, so the first uh, station that you're going to work on is only swinging. You're going to try to experience that free swinging motion that we talk about quite a bit. We're not going to break the swing and the motion up into parts or pieces. You're simply going to swing the weight back and forth, back and through, pardon me. Just trying to make sure that the ball is going to be in the middle of the motion. I'm going to use my one to five scale on this. So you're not trying to do anything other than just create that nope. swinging motion, yes? And I'm using the jet stick just to make sure that that free swinging motion experience is fresh in my mind. All right, so on this one, you're going to try to set the weight of the club head and use the one to five scale? That is true. All right. I'm going to give you this sticker for a second. I put it on a little early. Okay. <laughs> All right, one to five, free swinging motion. Okay. Three. All right, so Ben's using these one to five scale to coach himself, so you're not worried about the ball, you're not nope. going down that pathway, but for four to five minutes staying in this lane and coaching yourself through it. Searching for freedom right now. I'm not using the ball as feedback here. I'm using my internal state as feedback. Okay, so really just the, the freer you can get, the better in this circuit. Yes. Okay, so the holy grail of free swinging motion, you definitely want to practice that without judging or being attached to the result. You got it. Okay, second circuit here, we're going to focus on the divot. So we have the striker plate here, uh, GLA, we use it a lot. Uh, you could use a towel, right? So uh, Ben's going to put his club a couple inches in front and make a free swinging motion and see if he can interact with the ground versus hit the towel or hit the board in this case. Again, he's taking the ball away, so he's not focused on a result. Just trying to get a sense of where that club's going to be interacting with the ground. You ready? Yep. Ball in the way. Here we go. Oftentimes, too, with this activity, don't be afraid, uh, afraid to be playful with this. Try to move the divot too far back, too far forward, somewhere in between. So you don't have to get in the perfect spot every time. The more playful you are, the better. Absolutely. So playing around with it, focusing on where that club is interacting with the ground. Okay. Very cool. So hanging in this station for four to five minutes. Yep. All right. Very good. Here's your tape back. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you can get the divot in the right spot, and then if the ball hits on the toe or the heel, you're still not going to get the result you're looking for. So this third of the stations is center face contact. You got it. And then what's the easiest way for folks to find the middle? Make errors on purpose. So hit a couple balls off the toe, hit a couple balls off the heel, figure out what intention you need to produce the reality that you're looking for. Do not be alarmed if you're trying to hit extreme toe or extreme heel and you keep on hitting the middle. That's normal. Yeah. Just keep the party going if that happens to you. Okay, so show us three. Show us one off sure. the toe, one off the heel. Try My toe strike. Right. And then using some tape or some Dr. Scholl's foot spray. Just off the toe there. To give you some feedback to find out what actually happened. All right, I'm going to go off the heel. Get it? Oh, yeah. So I got heel, I've got toe. So uh, so there you go. So in this case, Ben's trying to on purpose move it around, not trying to be perfect. 
and then lastly, somewhere in between. Middle. It's pretty close. Yeah. Okay, cool. So stay on this toe heel center center face contact for four or five minutes, right? Yep. Okay, so we did free swinging motion, divot, center face contact. The next thing we'd like to talk about is club face control. So the club face could be right of the target, left of the target, or somewhere in between, yes? Yes, so remember, uh, everybody at home, the club face ultimately determines where your ball starts. So if the ball starts to the right, the face is open. If it starts left, it's closed. Uh, if it starts straight, it's somewhat square. So I'm going to make the errors on purpose here again. I'm going to try to get the face a little open, a little closed, and then see if I can go somewhere in between. Okay. You going to start open first? Yep. So on that one, you were paying attention to the face through the ball. Is that true? Yes. So my goal on that swing was just to stay present to the club face all the way through the motion. So you're not trying to hit a good shot here? No. You're just setting up a training circuit that allows you to become more aware and more skilled at controlling the face. You got it. If I can find right and left, I can find middle. All right, here we go. Show us a close club face. There it goes. Boom. And then last somewhere in between. Okay. Pretty straight. Okay. So, free swinging, divot, <laughs> center face contact, directional or club face control, yes? You got it. All right, last of the circuits, last of the five circuits, we're going to do club path, the mm -hmm. swing direction. So, demonstrate that free swinging motion and then take it in different directions for the folks at home. Here's neutral, what feels neutral to me. Now, I'm going to go right with my swing direction. So clearly Ben is doing something different here. He's not standing on the range doing the thousand ball plan over and over and over again. That does not work. And here's my left swing direction. So this is you playing around with the path. Yes? Yep. Okay. So now we've always used a slight moderate severe. So in those demonstrations you did severe in both directions. Is that true? That's true. All right, very good. Which one are you going to start out with first here? I'm going to go right to start. Okay. So this is what's going to happen to all of you at home. You're going to sense it, the club path moving either right or to the left, and then all of a sudden you might look at the outcome like, huh. Like that's what I've been trying to do the whole time. nicely. <laughs> now I'm going to go left. And then errors are okay, so a little thin, no big deal. You were just trying to do something different with the path. Yes? Yeah, now I'm going to sense neutral, so somewhere in between those. Okay, so that was the fifth of five circuits. So, you know, let's say you do that for four minutes of pop, but you're 20 minutes in. Yep. Now you would repeat. You'd go back up to the top, start with the free swinging motion only. And run right through it again. And then run through it again. So this is definitely the fastest way to improve your golf skill, and you want to make sure you're keen on the most important things, right? You got it. Okay. We hope this helps you. Uh, put this into your training practices, and you'll be shocked to see what happens. So uh, we thank you for joining us, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time.